first of every of the uh, Sunday inspirational talks. My name is John Mark Shaw, and uh, I'm an ordained interfaith minister. I'm also a life and business coach and professional speaker. Um, I want to give you a little bit of background about why we're here today and, um, and what my intention is. So uh, at the end of the last decade, in 2009, I had a calling experience. I was in a spiritual center with a mentor, um, and I had, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more later about the background to that, but um, I became very inspired with studying spirituality and participating in this spiritual center. And while I was singing with the congregation, I had a calling experience. Um, it sounds a little weird, um, but I literally heard a voice in my head um, say something to me, and I also had an experience of light coming down through the top of my head and refracting out through my throat and my chest. And so there was a beam of light expanding outward, and the, the voice said to me that it was my calling to speak the word, uh, to speak the word of God. That was the languaging um, that I heard it in, because that was the languaging that I was reading and studying. Um, so to use that. Uh, word for the internet. Um, and so it's taken me kind of a long time to figure out how to make that manifest, how to make that happen in this world um, where I have um, uh, a family that I support. Uh, we live in this building and um, many of you know I was in business for 25 years. Uh, part of the way I've manifested that was I've given some spiritual talks in the past. Part of the way is by being a coach. I believe that I'm serving people spiritually. Um, but over the last several years, um, there's been this calling to, um, I give a lot of workshops that are sort of success principle kind of workshops to help people grow their lives. But there's been this calling to really just do something that's more like a sermon, more like church or temple or a spiritual center that's really just about inspiration and connection to, to the internet. And so that's what um, led me to do this. And of course, in the, in, uh, there were obstacles along the way, and I was waiting for this nice room that they're building. And you always know when you're waiting and you have a calling that that's something that I call a paradigm. So I decided to practice what I teach as a coach and say, I'm not going to wait for the condition to sort itself out. I'm just going to start where I, where I can with what I have. Um, which is to rent this room and to be with you, you all here today. So today's topic is really about the dawning of the light within us. And yesterday, uh, on the 21st, was the winter solstice. And in the northern hem hemisphere, for since ancient times, the return of the light or the dawning of the light has been celebrated um, by you know so-called pagans or indigenous cultures, earth-based spirituality. And most of the religious rituals um, that have emerged really started with, with an understanding of nature and how nature affects our lives. And so the, the dawning of the light is the shortest day of the year, and it's symbolic of the return of the, of the light coming back, because as of today, the days get longer. Um, and so the uh, Hindu festival of lights, right, which is Diwali, is also inspired by this time of year, by the return of the light, the dawning of the light. Hanukkah, we light candles, symbolizing the return of the light. And of course, Christmas, which is this week, which is the birth of the Christ. Um, and we have uh, Christmas trees, we were talking about the light, that we celebrate the light, um, the light of spirit and the light of spirit within us. Um, interestingly, um, as I was saying, these are traditions from different world religions. Um, and the word yoga, which was really based in the oldest religion, which is Hinduism, um, really means to yoke or to un unify or to unite with the, the divine. And the word religion also is rooted in the term religio, which is the Latin for to bind together. And so 
really the essential of what all religion, all yoga, all spiritual practice is, is to connect to the divine. And you know, the way I think about it is that we all have two natures. We have a human nature, uh, which is the body living in this three-dimensional time and space. And then we have an infinite side of our nature. And that infinite side of our nature is connected to the divine. And there are many words uh, for the divine. There's Allah, there's the Christ, there's Krishna. One of the things that I find to be very interesting and I love about the Hindu tradition is that they have a word for Brahman, which is the oversoul or the God, sort of the big God, but they also have a word for the Atman, which is the internal God, the God within. And I like that they have two different words for that. Right? So there's the, there's the God, um, which is all of life, but there's the indwelling God, right? that light of spirit within us. And so at this time of year, and what we're talking about today, is a spiritual awakening. It's a time of awakening, the dawning of the light, the dawning of the light of spirit within us. Um, to, and, and our goal is really to ignite that fire, to reignite, to re to have a rebirth or a resurrection, right, of our connectedness to life, to energy, to spirituality, and then ultimately to ignite the fire of that in our lives so that we can shine our light in its most radiant way and create lives that we love living and impact the world. Um, a couple of scriptural quotes that say, there's one in the New Testament that says, do not look low here or low there, kingdom of God is within you, right? So that's another way of saying what the Atman is in Hinduism, that many people have a kind of an old-fashioned, but really not a, um, a well-studied concept of God as a man in the sky, usually a man and not a woman in traditional times, right? But really, even great spiritual masters throughout time Hindu masters, the you know Jesus, you know Muhammad. What they really said was, God is everywhere, and mostly connect. We connect to it within us that we are one with the infinite. We are one with the divine. That we are not separate. That there isn't a God up in the sky who's judging us and um, and judging whether we're, we've done you know done a good job and who's punishing us when we don't do a good job. That, but there is an infinite that we are one with. And we don't have to go looking for it. Um, one of my favorite uh, teachers um, who created the um, Transcendentalist movement, em Emerson, uh, interestingly, he was a minister um, and he got kicked out of Harvard Divinity School because he gave a speech where he said that you don't have to go to church to experience a relationship with God. And he said this in the mid 19th, 19th century, around 1830, 1840. And they said they did not invite him back for many years, but what ultimately happened was he became a rock star. Literally, he became like Bono or Mick Jagger of his time. And so they just couldn't help but invite him back to speak because he was so famous and so powerful as a spiritual leader. But Throughout time, there's been this sort of tension between do we have to experience God by, in the formal rituals of a religion that for some people is alive, but for some people is not as alive, or can we come to the lounge in Southampton and, or, and experience spirituality, or in the loving look with our partner or with, with our kids, or as we're walking down the street. And so, how do we connect more with this indwelling spirit within us. Another scriptural quote is, I am the light of the world. I am the light that lighteth up every man and woman in the world. And how can we lean into connecting to that fire, that burning fire spirit within, and become the light of the world? How brightly can we start to shine our lights? And I wanted to read a, a very famous quote. Some of you may have heard it before um, by our presidential candidate, who's also a spiritual teacher, Marianne Williamson. Um, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light 
not our darkness that, must, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God, of Brahman, of, of, of the universe, of the infinite that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Maya Angelou said, nothing can dim the light which shines from within. So how do we access our infinite nature? How do we awaken the light of spirit within us so that we can shine, make manifest the glory of the infinite, and have lives that are full expressions of everything that we would love? Eckhart Tolle, a famous spiritual teacher, talks about the return movement in life. He talks about how oftentimes when we have a tragedy, a loss, that there is an opportunity there for a spiritual awakening. Um, a very famous writer named Mark Nepo, who wrote a book called The Book of Awakening, which was one of Oprah's bestsellers, uh, an exquisite book, I just gave that to uh, uh, some people for, for the holidays, had a cancer experience. He was a poet, brilliant poet, not necessarily a spiritual poet, but he had the craft of being you know, eloquent with words, and then he had a very long experience with almost dying, multiple times with cancer coming and then going into remission and then coming again. And in that dark time, that it's called the dark night of the soul, he had an awakening experience. He touched a part of him that connected to the infinite. And now he became one of the most important spiritual teachers on the planet right now, and all of his poetry is written with a, with a spiritual tone that awakens the infinite within all of us. Rumi said that the wound is where the light shines in. For myself, my awakening happened about 21 years ago when I uh, began to acknowledge that I was an alcoholic. And I had um, been raised in a family where there was some alcoholism. I was so-called functioning. I was working hard, building a career. Um, but I knew that it had come time to face and make some changes. And in that alcoholism experience, and ultimately through uh, becoming sober, I had an awakening experience. And so one of the, one of the beautiful uh, ideas for you to contemplate is the gift of these so-called return movements, these losses in our lives. Mark Nepo talks about how he would never have been, found his calling in life had he not gone through his cancer experience. I would also say, while I was ashamed for in the beginning, I'm very grateful that I had my alcoholism experience because that brought me here with you today. That set me on the course to be doing what I came here to do. And so my mentor, Mary Morrissey, has a line that I love that says, the content of your life is the curriculum of your evolution. And how can we start to look at what hap what's happening to us that's happening for us? So oftentimes to know that when there is a loss, when there is a challenge, there is an awakening opportunity for us. Another very powerful way for us to connect to the infinite within us is now very popular, the idea of mindfulness, the idea of yoga. And really, a lot of what I love to do for people who are new to some of these topics is really demystify things like meditation. Right? The truth is that the gateway to our connection to God, to spirit, to infinite intelligence, to Brahman and the Atman is really the breath. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be in an ashram. You don't have to look low here or low there for God. The kingdom of God is within you, 
and it's as near as your breath. You don't have to go to a temple or a church. You don't have to believe what was written by Jesus or was written by Muhammad. You don't have to go read any specific book. We were encoded as humans with access to the infinite through the most essential function that we have, which is our breath. In fact, the breath has always been, like the light, a metaphor for spirit. So we're running in our day, we're getting on the, 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 the path train, which always is challenging for me to experience when I'm like a, like a sardine squished, and we take three deep breaths. And in taking three or five deep breaths, we actually can connect to a peaceful center within us. And that's really all that the infinite is. It doesn't have to be a man in the sky. It doesn't have to be what was described in all these books throughout the ages. It's a peaceful center. It's an aliveness. Eckhart Tolle calls it an awake presence, right? A quiet, a stillness within us. That when you're sitting and you're looking at the beautiful water that we're all blessed to live next to, and you're just breathing, and you feel an aliveness inside you, that's as much a God or a spiritual experience as going to church or singing in a choir. And so we all have access. And we have access through our breath. And what's beautiful about the breath is you always have it. Until your last breath, we always have access. You could be on the train. You could be at work. You could be walking down the street in Times Square. Taking a few deep breaths is a gateway to, to the divine. Another very important way is through the practice of gratitude. There's an idea, um, the idea, there's a law called the law of increase, and really essentially what it means is what you praise, when you praise something, that will raise your vibration, and it will also cause the thing being praised to grow. So we know that when we bring our children up with praise, they become confident. I saw it this morning when my daughter made a little craft and I praised her, she lit up. We know when we criticize, we have the opposite effect. We create insecurity. And so the idea is there's the word raise within praise. And whatever we praise, we raise. And so we can praise our partner, our child, our, our, our niece or nephew, or our neighbor, our employee. And through the act of praise, we raise our vibration. So. The idea of vibration is that in quantum physics, it's been proven that there is nothing that's solid. There is no firm matter. Everything is energy that's vibrating, and that's called the law of vibration. And then a secondary law to the law of vibration is the law of attraction, which most people have heard of. There was a very famous movie called The Secret. And so when we praise or think positive thoughts about what a beautiful day. I'm so grateful that I'm breathing. I'm so grateful for my happy, healthy family, my beautiful home, for the sunny day, for the air that I'm breathing. What we're doing is we're raising our vibration. We're changing the broadcast frequency of our energy. You know when you're upset, frustrated, angry, sad, depressed, what's true is that your vibration is a lower vibration and what we're broadcasting is what we're attracting. And so when we're broadcasting joy, praise, gratitude, we organize, we, we create a magnetic field which organizes the molecules of our life into something that's a match for that. We'll talk about that in a bit. When we're saying negative things and criticizing, what we're doing is the opposite of that. So to be grateful for all of the things in our lives that are blessings is very powerful, and it's also quick access. We all have something, certainly in this room, to be grateful for, and most humans do, that we woke up today. I mean, some people didn't get a chance to wake up, woke up. But that we, that we have people that we love, that we're healthy, generally, that we have a beautiful home. There's another higher practice of gratitude that was uh, spoken about by the Apostle Paul, who was in a, uh, a horrible, um, jail for speaking the word of, and, and, and promoting uh, the, the teachings of Jesus. Uh, he was in a jail that would make our current jails look like club bed, right? more like a dungeon. And he said, he wrote this line from there, he said, in whatever 
experience I am in, therein to be grateful. So there's grateful for, we're blessed to have healthy kids, we're grateful for that, we're grateful for our health, but there's also grateful in, meaning unconditional gratitude. I'm grateful even if I lost a client, or I got a big bill, or it's rainy outside, or I've had a loss in my life of some kind, that I can still find a generative gratitude within me, and that that's the ultimate empowerment and that's our connection to our source. To be grateful to our connection to our source, to be grateful for the air that we're breathing, for our breath, for this opportunity to have this life, to have a human incarnation. The Buddhists say that it is such a rare thing. There are so many souls waiting in line to have a human incarnation. And just to have this precious human life, they call it, is such a rare gift that we can be grateful for it, even in the messiness and sometimes the challenge or the tragedies in our lives. Another piece of this law, this praise, which is, also, which is gratitude, but also to be proud of ourselves, right? To celebrate our wins. Abraham Lincoln, one of the, um, one, you know, the most, uh, our heroes in this country, um, was also one of the most maligned figures in U.S. history. Ultimately, he was assassinated, but he was also an amazing, incredible leader who freed the slaves and created the Emancipation Proclamation, but also began the Civil War. So he had a lot of a lot of haters, as we say in right, current parlance. Um, and so, one of the things that he did when they found him at the end of his life, he had three things in his pocket. He had a uh, monogram. Uh, handkerchief. He had a confederate coin, which was interesting, since he was obviously not on the side of the confederates, to have compassion, I believe. And then he had an article that was written about him, that was folded, that looked like it had been folded and unfolded. And the story was that he read this article every day. And the article was an article about him being a great leader and president that was written by a, a newspaper in Europe. And so the teaching here is we all need to, to remind ourselves about who we really are. Abraham Lincoln, who had a lot of people hating him, a lot of people saying what a terrible president he was and that he made bad decisions and he started a war, right? He had a lot of, he was very embattled. Every day would take what I would call an energetic vitamin. Gratitude is an energetic vitamin. The breath is an energetic vitamin. Being proud of ourselves celebrating our wins, we celebrating the fact that you're married, that you have had a child, that you've graduated from great schools, that you've done something with your career, to remind ourselves of our wins, just like Abraham Lincoln did every day, to remind himself in the face of the challenges of life. And that connects us to the power within us, the power that breathes us, to, that, to the spirit, to the light within us. Um, and then there's our vision. And we'll talk more in future talks about the power of vision. But we can connect at any moment. Right now we're entering the threshold of a new year and a new decade. And I'd love for you all to start to ask yourselves, what would you love? Not only what would you love in 2020, but what would you love in the new decade, in these next 10 years? And if you look back at your own life and yourself 10 years ago, and all of the incredible growth and change that has happened to you over these last 10 years, if you look back at that, and now you look forward and you imagine even more growth, even more success, even more positive change and transformation, right? So to imagine the life you would love, what would you love in your life? Would you love more financial success, more career success? Would you love to start your business? Would you love to to speak, your, to speak your message into the world? Would you love to have a beautiful home? Would you love to give to charities? Would you love to travel? To tune in in the moment to what we would love as our vision is another energetic vitamin, and that also connects us to the spirit within us, connects us to the divine. So we can praise anything around us, be grateful. We can take a deep breath. We can praise ourselves and celebrate our wins. 
and we can tune into our vision. And these are all what I would love to call, I love to call energetic vitamins that we can take in any moment when we're feeling disconnected from our energy, disconnected from our source. And so in the degree that we come into a conscious and a vital realization or an experience of our connection with spirit, one of the other benefits to that is that we create a magnetic field that attracts all of the things that we would love for our vision. The more connected we are to our source, to the spirit within us, the more we shine, the more positively we're thinking, the more we're thinking about our wins and being grateful, and then shining our light into the world, the more good that we attract through what I spoke about before, the law of attraction. We become a person who has, because we feel full and uplifted, and we're going out into the world full and uplifted, and therefore we attract the more good that we would love. So whatever we're giving and putting off and broadcasting into the field or into the universe is what we're attracting back to us. And so when we are filled with spirit, when we're connected, when we're feeling positive and proud of ourselves and grateful for the good in our lives, and, and then we're shining our light into the world, and giving our gifts to the world, the benefit is also that we attract all of the things that we would love. We become a match to the more good that we would love in our lives. And whether it's more money or more success, or more love, or more health, any of those things, or more adventure, the more we give our gifts, the more we shine with this light, this indwelling light, the more good we experience, the life our lives grow. And so there's that benefit, not just we're not only connecting to spirit for it, the sake of doing it, but because it's filling us with a light that helps us shine. And so in this season of giving, how can we give more of ourselves? Whether we're giving gifts or giving presents or giving insight or giving support or giving love or giving time or giving help to people, how do we connect to that inner light within us and then shine it out for others? And in shining our light, we become an extension of spirit. And not only do we feel more uplifted and have a better experience of our lives, but ultimately we actually attract more good into our lives. As we shine our lights, we attract all of the love, the money, the support, the success that we would love. And so how can we all commit to shining a bit brighter as we move into the threshold of the new year, the new decade, to spend more time connecting to that spirit within us, to feel ignited by that connection, and then to shine that light to the people that we love, to the people that we work with, to the people we serve, our customers, our clients, our family members. And in so doing, we make manifest the glory of that one life of God, of spirit, of the universe. And by making that manifest, we become a match to receiving all the good that we would love to have in our lives. So I want to thank you all for coming today. Have a beautiful, blessed day and hope to see you back here on a future Sunday. Thank you very much.